discrete trial instruction is an important method for teaching children uh, with autism. Uh, there are many studies documenting the benefits uh, of this method. This method generally includes uh, a teacher sitting with a student, with a learner, with a child with autism. The teacher has materials uh, and uh, information that they would like to provide to the student. Uh, the student usually sits across a table. The teacher presents the uh, instructional material uh, and when children are uh, unable to or have not yet learned to respond to the material, uh, the teacher will prompt the response and help the child uh, to uh, learn the skill. Uh, it's been found to be a very important method uh, for teaching children with autism and overcoming uh, some of the symptoms and learning difficulties of children with autism. There have been a number of ways of conducting discrete trial instruction sessions. What I'd like to do now is show you a video and talk to you about uh, a method of discrete trial instruction that we have found to be uh, the most effective and embedded in this video as well as the methodology I will discuss uh, with you uh, why we're teaching in the manner in which we're teaching uh, this individual child. So let's now take a look at this video. Good, there's a token for you, Sylvia. What's this one called? Toothpaste. Toothpaste. Touch your hand. Good, what's this one called? Bow. Bow, good, Sylvia. Two tokens for you. What's this one? Radio. A radio because it's blues. Clues. Blues. Clues. There you go. What's this one called? Slide. That's right, it's a slide. Two treats, says they? Good. And what room is this? Kitchen. Kitchen. What room is it? Kitchen. Kitchen, good. One token for you, Sylvia. Say puzzle. Puzzle. And what's this one called? Spoon. Spoon. What room is this? Kitchen. Kitchen, good, Sylvia. Two tokens. What animal here? Nick. Say marker. Marker. What's this one called? Pukega. A popsicle. Good. There's another token. What's this Let's now take a look at a, a video of uh, discrete trial instruction um, where the methodology includes a number of strategies that have been demonstrated to be effective with children with autism to reduce problem behavior during high demand situations. This is a, a video of a learner with autism, a six-year-old girl uh, by the name of Sylvia, uh, and her teacher Leanne. This was videotaped in the uh, Carbone Clinic uh, uh, in New York. Uh, Sylvia is a learner with autism who would not benefit from everyday life experiences as it relates to acquiring language and other cognitive skills. So discrete trial instruction is a method that is used to directly teach the type of skills that typical children might learn. As you can see, Leanne has a set of materials in front of her and she's systematically presenting these materials uh, and Sylvia is expected to respond. She's also using a token board as you can see and she's ticking off the tokens which act as rewards for Sylvia which can then be exchanged for an activity after she's completed uh, all of uh, her work and has achieved uh, and attained uh, about 40 or so uh, uh, tokens. Okay. Um, Leanne has some materials in front of her. Um, some of those are new targets, skills she's working on, and a lot of it is, in fact, mastered skills. So let's now describe what it is Leanne is doing. The purpose of what Le Leanne's uh, procedures are is to basically reduce problem behavior, which is a big problem during discrete trial instruction. When you ask children with autism to sit and attend to tasks, uh, they frequently engage in disruptive escape and avoidance behavior. As a result of that, Leanne is teaching in a very specific sort of way based upon a set of methods that have been shown to be effective to reduce problem behavior. One of the first things you probably notice is the pace of instruction. You notice how quickly uh, Leanne is presenting instructional demands to Sylvia. But notice, Sylvia is not frustrated in any way, not bothered by it, not distressed by it, but just continues to respond. 
we have found that children actually prefer to be presented materials in a fast-paced sort of way. In fact, Carol Roxborough and I uh, published a paper a, a couple of years ago, actually in 2012, in the journal Behavior Modification, a psychological journal, peer-reviewed scientific journal in the United States, that basically showed that you actually achieved less problem behavior the faster you presented uh, demands. So presenting demands at about one second uh, with a one second interval or what's called a uh, intertrial interval uh, seems to be most effective for many uh, children. Of course the pace should be adjusted to the individual child. In addition, Leanne is only presenting uh, a few um, uh, mastered, uh, uh, let me back up, a few target skills to many, many mastered skills. Uh, and the reason for that uh, is that the interspersal of easy demands along with only a few difficult demands seems to reduce problem behavior uh, pretty effectively. It's called interspersal training. In addition, she's mixing all of the skills together. In other words, one time she teaches a label, then she'll teach motor imitation, uh, then she'll teach a listener response. Um, this is referred to as mixing and varying. It has also been shown to reduce problem behavior. In addition, whenever she presents a target, an unknown skill, she will immediately prompt a response. That's called errorless teaching, making it impossible for Sylvia to be incorrect or greatly reducing the probability that she'll be incorrect. In fact, reducing, problem, reducing learner errors also reduces uh, problem behavior. So these are some of the methods you're seeing presented here during discrete trial instruction. It may not look exactly like uh, what you might see other people presenting in a very slow and deliberate way, uh, but the methods here are specifically designed to reduce problem behavior and make it less likely um, that less likely that we have problem behavior and more cooperation. And here at the end is Sylvia receiving her backup reinforcer, uh, and now she will uh, enjoy that for a few minutes and then go right back to teaching.